What's up Twitter fam? Micah again here today ready to shoot another high adventure video. Today we are going to be crawdad hunting. But not the normal crawdad hunting that you do. Most people throw out traps and uh, trap crawdads. You know, let it sit for four or five hours and pull them up. I've been trying to do that recently and um, for some reason I just I haven't been getting anything. I've, I've hit a couple of good spots and um, I know there are crawdads down there. I see the crawdads out but they're just not crawling into my trap. So I figured, you know what? To heck with this. I'm gonna go down and catch them by hand. So that's what we're doing today. So it's pretty basic. I've got my gloves, snorkel mask, uh, Volcom five-toed shoes. These are awesome for river and 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 all just all kinds of outdoor activities. Love these. And uh, just a mesh bag to put the crawdads in while I'm diving down for them. And of course, hoping to fill up the cooler today. I'm after about. 30 to 40 crawdads probably. Just enough for myself. I just want to make a nice small boil um, this afternoon slash evening for supper. And um, really, I've got this little spot down here. I've probably got about half a dozen spots all along this river that uh, I like to hit. And it's just a nice little deep pool. It's sandy on the bottom with some uh, debris floating around. It just seems like the crawdads really like uh, that kind of habitat. I like to try to keep it as shallow as possible because the river's so cold that um, it's difficult. I don't get as good of a breath as I do like in warm water when I'm diving down for the crawdads. So try to keep it a little shallower if I can. And uh, like I said, with the smooth bottom, the sandy bottom, a lot of times the crawdads are out and just kind of sitting out. So it's easier to grab them instead of like diving down, having to uh, flip over stones and stuff like that. Just be able to kind of pick them up off the bottom like candy. So that's the hope anyway. So here's one of the first pools you can see kind of a nice deep pool right down here and there's a lot of debris up on either sides of uh in that in that sandy area and we're definitely going to hit both those sides and that's where we're going to be mainly looking for uh the bugs down there you got kind of a second little shallower pool right down here but some bigger boulders right down here that uh, we can definitely look around, but a little shallower, probably we'll skip over this part right in here. All right, and here's the third and final pool. There's a lot of good debris right in there. Here's kind of the main current area. We'll stay away from that, but uh, we'll do a lot of hunting right in here as well. A lot of big old boulders down here, see if anything's out. And, uh, but first we're gonna get back down. We're gonna cross the river over there and probably get set up on the island right over here. All right, here we are. You can see it's a pretty, pretty shallow crossing to get the other side, but uh, I think I'm gonna ditch the sandals and throw on those uh, five-fingered shoes or five-toed shoes, whatever they're called, before we cross. Guys, I can't recommend these enough. These are fantastic, especially if you're out on the river a lot, at a lake, you know, places where it's rocky like this. If you're out, you know, just just bumming around the river or lake. I mean, these. It's not much for arch support, but uh, as far as it just it just adds another layer to the bottom of your feet. Super clear water. Whew. Super cold as well. <laughs> All right, we're across. There's the bridge. I think we're going to start right in here first. Hit this area. All right. So first life hack tip is if you want to defog your mask, just spit in it and rub it around. Let it set for 30 seconds, then rinse it out. That's all you need to do. It always works for me. I never use anything else. Definitely never pay for anything. But if you find that it doesn't work for you, toothpaste is also good. Here we go. Let's get hunting.
Oh my goodness, guys, sorry if the camera's shaking. I am freezing cold. Crazy thing was, so we had the first hole over here, kind of the shallower second hole there, and then the deeper one over there. I actually caught a majority of those crawdads right in this little shallow one, the one I was gonna skip over. Um, I didn't get anything over there. And I moved into that area and it's almost like they were out sunning themselves. I mean, it was just like candy on the bottom. They were just all over the place, just diving down. Unfortunately, I mean, it was shallow. It's like, it's like six feet deep right there. So I didn't have to dive down far. And then I was able to go pick up maybe about a dozen more in that deeper pool where all that trash and stuff was. But, oh man, I am ready to get back and get after a boil. Oh guys, check that out. I've got about, oh, probably 25 nice sized bugs in there, crawdads, crayfish, whatever you choose to call them. I would have kept getting more, but uh, I just, I'm just too cold. I'm numb right now. I apologize if the camera's shaking. I'm just, I'm slowly warming up. It's 100 degrees out here, but I'm still, still chilly. That just, that just, it's almost like I gotta get numb and then, and then I can swim around longer. But like I said, 25 is going to be enough for this round. I'm going to have some other stuff with the boil, so this will be perfect. All right, back across we go. Let's get these bad boys in the cooler. And let's go get our boil on. I'm excited. A little water in my cooler here. I want to, it's so hot out, I want to keep them, make sure they stay alive, stay fresh. When it's over 100 degrees, obviously just want to, Make sure everybody, you know, it's gonna be, you know, 20, 30 minutes before they're in a, a boiling pot. So, we'll just get all these guys out right here. There we go. Got some nice ones in there. Maybe more like 20 in there, but I've got some big ones. I mean, look at that guy. That's massive. He's got some good claws on him. There'll be some good claw meat in there too. All right, guys, got food on the table, got my pot ready to go. The crawdads are ready to be cooked. They're still alive and doing well. So here's my setup. I have this like cauldron going on here. I can, got the strainer going on here. I can strain them out. And uh, basically we're just gonna get a fire going and uh, let this baby boil. And then uh, I'll show you where we're gonna go after that. Got my piece of bark going here. Get this fire lit. All right, that's going. Just gonna let everything else catch. This is really dry wood, super hot. Get that water boiling. All right guys, so we got the water boiling up over here, but this is how my boil is gonna go down today. So we have some petite red gourmet potatoes. I'm gonna probably throw about five of those in there. I've got Walla Walla onions cut up in quarters. Uh, one Walla Walla onion, I should say. And then I've got some cabalsa that's gonna go in as well. And I also have some shell on mini shrimps that I'm gonna throw in there as well. Obviously, the crawdads are gonna be the main star of the dish, but, and remember, this is just kind of, this is made for my size here. Obviously, a lot of boils, if you're feeding, you know, six, 10, 15 people, you just multiply this by, you know, 10 or whatever. Then what I'm gonna do for the, um, for the sauces, there's some new Zatarain's Cajun hot sauce. I'm gonna pour that into the water along with some just lemon pepper to kind of offset the spice of the hot sauce and then some parsley as well let that let everything here including the uh, crawdads and the shrimp boil up in that and then when i pull it out i'm gonna sprinkle a little cajun's choice black seasoning and classic johnny seasoning salt just kind of over the whole mix some people also like to throw in um uh corn on the cob. I'm not a huge fan of the corn on the cob, so I'm gonna leave that out today. But uh, obviously, this is what makes, to me, uh, crawdad boil so much fun. You can do it so many different ways. You can make it spicy, you can cool it down a little bit, you can use hot sauces, whatever, potatoes, anything, just about anything you could throw in a soup. Um, 
but that's how mine's gonna go today. In fact, as you can see, the water's boiling up quite nicely, so we're gonna be ready to rock and roll. Let's throw this thing down. All right, so I got my five potatoes. Those are gonna go in first because those will take the longest to cook. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna let those sit in there for about two or three minutes, then throw my onions in. Like my fancy little mitt here. All right, so I got my Cajun sauce gonna go in first. I'm gonna be pretty liberal with that because I want them spicy. Next, we got our lemon pepper. Gonna be pretty liberal with that as well. I want this thing nice and spiced up. Awesome. And last but not least, some parsley flakes. That just adds a little kind of fresh taste to everything. I just really enjoy. I, I use it in just about every kind of soup I make. Really love it. All right, so our potatoes have been in there for about three minutes. You have to remember, those are smaller potatoes, so they don't need to, uh, did I just say small potatoes? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh gosh, okay, pun intended, not intended. <laughs> you have to, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the onions in next, because remember those onions do not, do not have to cook, or the potatoes, I should say, do not have to cook as long. Our cabalsa pieces, those are gonna soak up that sauce in that water really nicely. Oh, that's gonna taste good. All right, guys, I'm getting ready to throw the crawdads in. So if you don't like this sort of thing, go ahead and skip forward 20 seconds. But don't go blowing up my comment section about how inhumane this is or whatever. Because throwing crawdads in boiling water is the most humane way you can kill them. That water is so hot that the second they hit it, they're dead. It kills them that fast. So just don't even come at me. Right. Oh, he's feisty. Ooh, and careful when you're reaching in. All right, and in they go. You want to do this fast because I want them all to cook at the same time. Stars of the show. I promised y'all a hot tub. And you got it. All right, look at that. We got our shrimp in there. Our onions are peeling away nicely. Those potatoes are probably just about cooked up nice. We got those crawdads are cooking well. Look at that. Nice and nice and red. Let me see if I can get, get a hold of one here. Look at that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're gonna let it cook for a couple more minutes, then we're gonna pull these bad boys out. Look at that. Oh man, that is ready right there. Ho 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 ho. That is looking super good. My mouth's just watering. Oh, let's get that on the table. All right, and as many of you know, you just dump it out on something that you don't mind eating off of. I've just got an, a trash bag that obviously hasn't been used, you goobers. For the last bit, on with some Johnny's. Then some of this Cajun black seasoning. Again, I apply all this stuff pretty liberally because I just, I don't know, I'm a flavor person. There we go. Guys, we're ready to dig in. Oh, guys, I am excited about this. Let's poke this potato. Oh, perfectly cooked. That's the most difficult part I would say about this. You can't overcook the potato or else, or else you're gonna have like this weird mashy, mushy potato. So it's really the timing of knowing when to put everything in. And the way I just did it, that's how I suggest doing it. But everybody's got their own method. So that's the beauty about this. So this is how I peel my crawdads. Just take this bad boy right here by the body, by the tail, twist, pull out. Sometimes there's some junk right here at the top. You just kind of pinch your fingers together, pull that off, spread the tail out again, and then twist one more time, pull the shell off the top, off the bottom, and boom, you are in business. I mean, look at that, compare that to my pinky. I mean, that's almost a pinky size piece of meat, and that's about a regular medium sized crawdad. That is going to be delicious. So one last thing I personally like to do is I have a little bowl of a dash of lemon, sprinkle of pepper, and butter, and a hint of garlic, and I like to have it all melted up and I like to have it sitting right by me, and I will take my crawdads and, and everything, the sausage, the shrimp, the onions, everything, and I like to dip it in right there, 
Mm. It just adds an extra kick of flavor. And then, guys, when you're all set, I mean, you just go to town. I just start mm, just grabbing a little bit of everything mm, and just enjoying all the flavors because everything together is just delicious, just absolutely tasty. Mm. And everything is finger food here. You just grab a potato. I mean, it is Idaho. These things basically grow on trees, so... And the onions, or I should say the shrimp, and the um, sausage is a really good addition just because it just adds a little more protein into the into the eating. Just because, you know, the crawdads, you know, you're getting meat out of the claws, getting meat out of the, the tail. And, um, and the, you know, there, there's a nice bit of meat, but, you know, I mean, you are going to have to eat like 80, 100 crawdads before you might get filled up. So having that extra protein on the table from the shrimp and from the sausage is just is just perfect. Mm. Mm. Guys, this is summertime. This is living. Guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. Appreciate you watching. Mash that subscribe button if you enjoyed what you saw. If you didn't enjoy what you saw, then it's pretty much all downhill for you from here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. Hope you get busy living. See you in the next video.